Hello folks, welcome back to English 306 with me, Dr. Matt Barb. Uh, and today we'll be delving into this chapter, uh, I think it's, I forget, is this chapter 6? I don't recall. But anyway, this chapter about the six steps, uh, where McClellan talks about art and how to get a, you know, think, I guess a career in the comics industry. But I think beyond that, uh, really the stuff he's saying here would apply to just about any creative endeavor. So I know I've got some of you uh, in this course interested in making uh writing novels, for example, or maybe making video games. Now, I think a lot of those, the, the stuff that McLeod talks about here, uh, even though he's focused on comics, I think you could, you know, I think it applies across the board uh, you know, to almost any creative uh, enterprise. Uh, so let's uh, dive into this then. We'll talk a little bit about McLeod's theory about how art came to be and the purpose that it serves, uh, the practical value of it, if there is any. Uh, and then we'll get into these six steps we've been talking about, which I think is really the uh, the meat of the chapter. Uh, but to start us off here, I wanted to get your thoughts on how you think about art, uh, specifically what you think is art versus things that maybe seem like art, but you wouldn't consider art. Uh, you know, I have my own little soapbox on this, but I will spare you that. <laughs> I just I got a couple of examples here. There's one that's a... Uh, I think these are called Perler, P-E-R-L-E-R -E -E creations. They look kind of like pixels to me. Um, but you can see they've used these, they're basically little plastic pieces that you uh, melt together uh, to make things. And uh, they've made here some little succulent plants and potted them up. It's kind of cute. <laughs> uh, and then over on the right, you've got some deer heads. You know, that's, uh, you know, taxidermy is the name of that, that field. And I have had student, at least one student in my class before who was a uh, professional taxidermist. <laughs> Very interesting. I knew nothing about this, uh, uh, I guess it's a profession, or world of art, <laughs> uh, until, but you know, there's quite a bit to that, uh, as, as you can imagine, Re really both of these. Uh, but just the question, do you think these are art or should they be classified as something else? Okay, pop myself back into the the show here, and let's get the uh, comment going. Okay, so let's uh, look at what McLeod thinks of as art. Uh, so he, this is a view I've heard many times. It's kind of a traditional view. I don't know how well this would hold up in a modern anthropology class. You know, there's different views on where why do we have art and why do you see art? You know, every civilization, every culture you want to think about, <laughs> there's no such thing as a culture where the only thing they ever focus on is survival. Um, you know, there's, there's dancing, uh, there's pottery, uh, there's uh, you know, poetry, uh, storytelling. You know, there's, there's all these, we always find something creative uh, in every culture, everywhere on the planet, throughout history. Uh, you know, no matter how far back you go. Uh, so the question is, why is that? And McLeod's theory is basically, well, you've got, no matter how, uh, you know, once you get the survival stuff done, you can't be in survival mode all the time, right? You know, eventually you find the food, you find the water, <laughs> you get the shelter, <laughs> you start to get your basic needs covered, uh, and you got some uh, extra time. And that's what he says is where, you know, these uh, sports come about, uh, myths, legends, it's just kind of people sitting around bored, basically, and then coming up with uh, you know, these creative uh, endeavors. I, I don't know if it's that that simple or not, but it is kind of fun to think about. Yes, and the different, you know, the different kinds of art. You know, I've always been kind of interested in this subject of uh, history. You know, ancient history. You, you can take some great courses on, about it, <laughs> anthropology and archaeology, and so on and so forth. Uh, but you certainly see. Uh, you know, again, no matter how far back you go, it's never just plain pots. You know, they, they need the pots to carry water, uh, to cook food. You know, they serve a lot of useful functions. And, you know, typically what you see is the, the earliest pots. You know, maybe there's very little decoration. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't take very long before you start to get a lot of elaborate designs, you know, etching into the pots. Uh, and eventually you got pots that really... Uh, aren't serving any practical use anymore, right? These are just purely decorative. Uh, you know, you could certainly go out and buy a fancy vase. You know, it's like a different word. It's got a, just a vase <laughs> or just a pot. No, 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 this is a vase, right? You know, this is like a fancy thing. You know, meaning that it's kind of become more art uh, than something practical. 
is kind of what he's getting at here, right? You say, this is, yes, it might look like a pot, but really this, is, this has no practical value. You would never put water in this. <laughs> you know, it's just to, it's, uh, you know, this needs to be behind glass somewhere in an art gallery, right? It has reached this you know, lofty pinnacle. And so that's kind of what he's saying, talking about here. You know, and I think as societies, we, we certainly have these, uh, these views. And frankly, it's a lot of what people mean when they talk about culture. You know, they say, I'm going to college to become uh, well-cultured. You know, what, what does that mean? You know, you know, part of it is, well, I've developed uh, an appreciation for things like opera, <laughs> for works of literature. You know, I actually enjoy reading Shakespeare now. I, I didn't, you know, before I had only read, you know, <laughs> who knows. <laughs> uh, but that's the sort of idea. And uh, I think McLeod is right to kind of poke at this a little bit. You know, there's certainly more to it than this, and there's a lot of, uh, you know, frankly, a lot of this is subjective. Um, you know, what is, is it better to read a Shakespeare play uh, than to go see Hamilton? And what, what does that question even mean, right? It's a kind of an, it's always kind of an apples and uh, oranges question to, to some extent. But uh, anyway, uh, I want to get into these six steps. And... Let's just go through these briefly. And again, he's, he's talking mostly here about comics, uh, but this could be about anything. And it's just somebody sets out to create something. So you say, I want to, uh, I got this idea uh, for something I want to create, maybe an idea for a story or a novel or, you know, just something kind of incubating, kind of at the idea stage. It could be this, this philosophical thing that you want to explore, uh, just some kind of some impulse you have to create something. But it's really just at the idea stage. You know, that, that's where it starts. Uh, so from that, uh, we move into what uh, he calls the step number two, the form step. So you start thinking, okay, I got this idea. What should it be? Should I do a book about it? Is, is this a novel? Is it a short story? Is it a you know, chalk drawing? Is it a chair? <laughs> um, maybe a comic book. I would add a video game to it. So you kind of got some kind of idea for a story. Uh, and then that's forming... Uh, into something a little bit more tangible, right? You said you're saying, I, I think this would make for a very good uh, a YouTube video. Uh, or for this, I think it would be better as a uh, pot holder. <laughs> uh, but anyway, some kind of form. And then the third is what he calls the idiom. Uh, and that goes with that form. So if he said comic book, uh, you know, there's different types of comic books. You know, theoretically, you could have any kind, I suppose, but... Uh, reality is, when you go to the comic book store, there, there are certain genres, certain kind of classifications, I guess, or categories of comics. You know, some are like the uh, American superhero, sort of classic, uh, you know, brightly colored, you know, your Batman, Superman, that sort of thing. Uh, there's all these other genres. You know, you know if you, again, go to the Granite City Comics if you get a chance, and you'll find some are, you know, basically, uh, you know, very sophisticated, artistic uh, kind of philosophical comics. You've got uh, romance comics. You know, of course, you got comics from uh, you know other countries like a manga. It's quite a bit different, and that has its own set of genres, <laughs> very well defined actually. <laughs> uh, so that would be one thing is to maybe explore some of these genres. You know, I run into this one with uh, uh, video games. People come to me and they'll not. You know, I probably be interviewed hundreds of people in the video games industry, producers, developers, artists, you know, you name it. And, and they talk a lot about this, too, when somebody comes up to them, and uh, a young person, and says, I want to get a job in this industry, you know, you know, how do I get started? I, I have this idea for a video game. <laughs> That's kind of the notorious thing that they don't want to hear, right? I have this idea. Well, everybody's got ideas. You know, I got this idea for a novel. So what? Uh, you know, it's, it's what you do with that. It's what you do with that idea uh, that makes uh, all the difference, right? You know, and the same thing uh, here. You know, so you might say I have an idea for a, a novel, but then they'll want to know how well do you know the the idiom of novels or the genre. Uh, so you want to write a science fiction story or a fantasy story, but maybe the person has only read uh, one author, and you know, they really don't have a sense of this genre, uh, much less the form. You know, all the stuff that's possible with the novels. And, you know, same thing for video games. Uh, so the short of it is a lot of the, uh, 
you know, these video game professionals will say, really what you need to do is, is explore the entire world of video games. You know, don't just get hung up on like first person shooters <laughs> or just play a lot of Pokemon, you know, whatever the case may be. Uh, you really have to sample at least a wide variety uh, within the genres and uh, beyond that to the form level uh, to get a sense of really what you're getting yourself into. And it's really helpful, I think, too, just to have some basis of uh, comparison. You know, even in, even within that world of the first-person shooter, you know, if we want to stick to that genre, you know, there's, there's quite a bit of difference, now, I would argue, between a Quake and, a, let's say, a Doom and, <laughs> you know, all the, all the modern stuff, like the modern Doom. And so just, you know, that's the third thing, is just trying to get a handle on, you know, the... Uh, the sort of works within that form that have kind of solidified into these things we call genres. Uh, and then the fourth one is the structure. So this is really sort of getting closer to this uh, all-important crafting phase. But but here you're thinking, okay, I got this idea and I want to make it into a... Let's just go with the video game. So I got this idea for a video game. Uh, I've looked into the different uh, video games that are out there. I have a sense of what a video game is like. <laughs> Uh, and then I've gone beyond that to thinking about different genres of video game. And let's say uh, we're talking about the Walking Dead video game. So we could say that uh, the genre there is the adventure game. Or the uh, point and click episodic adventure game. Uh, so I kind of skipped ahead to the fourth part, the structure. <laughs> uh, so the uh, Walking Dead, they decided on a structure called episodic uh, adventure game. And so what that means is instead of just having this one giant, you know, hundreds plus hour uh, experience they have the uh, the story that they've broken up into chapters or what they call episodes uh, that you can sit down and play over the course of a you know a couple hours basically and they put uh, these episodes together into seasons like, like a tv show so that's kind of the structural view of that uh, and when you're deciding if we want to bring this back to no novels as well you know you can't just have a, a novel where you're just well, some people have tried it, but you probably don't want to just cover like <laughs> everything that happens uh, in every day, uh, every hour. It's just kind of like an hour-to-hour -hour account. You know, you, you don't do that, right? You know, you think about how you're gonna you're gonna plot this out, and what what it would be some good scenes to include, and what should just be skipped over. I uh, remember when McLeod was talking about closure. You know, you don't want to show like every minute. <laughs> <laughs> like a minute-to-minute, -minute, <laughs> like a stop-motion photography-style comic, that'd be really boring. Uh, you know, instead, you try to think about these big moments, these crisis points, uh, you know, and what, and what dialogues are worth showing and what should just be dot, 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 you know, glossed over. <laughs> and, and then the next morning, <laughs> you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so this is kind of the, the fourth one I kind of call like the big picture view, you know, the outline, uh, uh, that's, that sort of thing. And then on to the, the crafting, uh, which is really where the skill comes in. He says, yes, this is where you're applying the skills. You're, you're learning, like, how do you actually do this? And really, the crafting is where I think most people uh, uh, skip, you know, because it's really the hard, the hard work. <laughs> so they're always trying to take shortcuts. Say, well, I got this idea for a novel, and I'm just going to sit down and write it, but I'm not actually going to study other novelists first or... Uh, I'm not going to read any books about how to write novels or you know, really work on my writing. <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just going to try to skip uh, skip ahead, you know, and it hardly ever works out. Uh, th this uh, lecture series I've been talking about, let me just show you that for a second. So you can get a look at this. Uh, how to Write Best-Selling Fiction by James Scott Bell. Uh, so again, I know a lot of you are interested in writing novels, and this book is really all about that crafting part of it. Uh, so it's getting beyond, uh, you, you know, I've got an idea, okay, so how do you actually take that idea and put it into a novel? And a lot of what he talks about in here is the same stuff McCloud is talking about. You know, really getting a good sense of the genre you're working in, not just reading one author, but comparing uh, many different kinds of authors, kind of doing that hard work of, uh, you know, an outline and and polishing your prose, learning how to like create good uh, characters and coming up with metaphors and you know, sort of all the novice mistakes to avoid and, and so on and so forth. So that's really where this crafting comes in. You know, and the same thing with the uh, video games. Man, you know, anybody could say, I got this idea for a game and do this other stuff. But, you know, do you actually know how to code? 
You know, have you sat down with something like Unity uh, or um, role-playing uh, construction uh, set? I forget what is that the name of that? <laughs> anyway, RPG Maker. <laughs> yeah, have you sat down with something like RPG Maker uh, or uh, game uh, construction set or uh, game maker? You know, these sorts of tools and, and really just learn how to do this stuff. Learn uh, what the professionals, the way they do it. Uh, taking what you can from studying them. Uh, have you made a little simple game just, just kind of hone your craft? You know, that sort of thing. And a lot of the these uh, books about writing novels, for example, that, that tell you pretty standard advice. It's like, write three novels, start to finish. Don't ever show them to anybody. Just write them and stuff them into a drawer and forget about them. <laughs> you know, those are just where you're honing your craft. You're trying to get better at writing novels. You can't just write a good one you know, right off the bat, uh, you know, you have to work on this craft. So that's the, uh, this is the step that would take the most time, uh, which is, again, what separates the, the novice, you know, from somebody just doing it for fun, just kind of as a hobby, uh, versus somebody that really wants to take it to that next level. Uh, that person will have studied and uh, really worked really, really hard on the craft. And then uh, this uh, surface level is the problem, because that is what most people see. You know, if you, you you play a game and you think, wow, this is I like these big explosions uh, in this game. Of the, you know, I want to have like really big guns <laughs> in my first person shooter. Uh, you know, they they start put thinking about these. Uh, you know, you know, a good example in video games is the uh, like the high definition graphics, right? And they'll say, I want this, you know, really advanced uh, pipeline, and I, I want to have uh, sunspots and god rays and you know and all this kind of like really. Uh, sort of bells and whistles type stuff, you know. So they're thinking about that, or maybe they're, they're thinking, "Man, I would really like to have this uh, five point one theatrical sound." <laughs> uh, so stuff like that, uh, rather than you know, again thinking about this more boring stuff, you know, in the, in the crafting section, or going back even to like structure and idiom and, and form. <laughs> you know, why are you? Uh, uh, wouldn't this make a better comic book than a video game? Oh, I haven't really even thought about that. Uh, so you haven't even really got to step two. <laughs> you know, much less jumping into thinking about God rays. And uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to think of the name of this, but, you know, it, it's really fun when you get into Unity game development. You know, everybody's always really concerned about this superficial stuff, ultimately. You know, you could have... Uh, you know, really cutting edge graphics and, and the sun coming up and you know, the, the, the textures on the leaves, you know, like the leaves are animated and got some birds flying around and all this kind of stuff. And you think, wow, this is really cool, isn't it? Uh, no, this actually could be quite, quite boring uh, because there's nothing there. It's just kind of like the surface level, very superficial stuff, but there's not much game. You know, there's, there's not much game there because uh, you've just kind of been focused on the, the surface level stuff instead of uh, this earlier earlier stuff. And you could have a game, I think about games like Minecraft. <laughs> I kind of want to get on a soapbox now. <laughs> uh, but if you look at that Minecraft game, it's a really good example of, like, yeah, on the surface it doesn't even look like much. Uh, you know, but once you play it, you realize, oh, my God, you know, there's so much craft in here that it's really well structured. It's really... Uh, they've really nailed the the idiom and you know and so on and so forth. There's a reason it's become such a popular popular game, and it's uh, the surface is probably the least impressive part of it. All right, so moving on from that, let's see if there's anything else there. Yeah, <laughs> professional. Yeah, and I've gone through all this. Uh, you know, a lot of English majors they start off again wanting to write novels and. You know, they everybody tells them, "Oh, look, you you can write really well." You know, this is I, I like your manuscript, uh, and then they they send it off to a publisher, or they start trying to get it self published or something, and they quickly find that you know nobody's really interested in it. <laughs> Why is that? <laughs> uh, and part of it is, you know, that well, frankly, the the competition is enormous, uh, but more it's probably more to do with they haven't really focused on developing their craft you know, and again they haven't really maybe they've looked at one of their favorite comic artists or, or maybe they're trying to do this little thing you know i want to be totally original and, you know and studying another novelist would just you know squelch my personal uh, originality my, my creativity you know they got this kind of chip on their shoulder like that and again it's just hampering them <laughs> they'd be so much better off losing that 
attitude and just really getting serious about, you know, let me see what's working well for other people, you know, and see if I can learn uh, from an example rather than just keep failing or <laughs> just keep blaming uh, blaming it on your readers, right? Well, you, you don't like my book just because you're just not sophisticated enough to appreciate the genius that is Matt Bart. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Uh, no, if I, if I were serious about novels, I would absolutely go out there and get the you know, 10 bestsellers right now, read those, study them, make notes, you know, do the same thing next month, same thing next month, uh, all the while just really working on my own uh, writing, taking advantage like the right place here, here at St. Cloud State, and you know, go there, have them read it, give you tips, feedback, suggestions, you know, all that stuff. It's a painful road. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like ACDC says, right? It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, here uh, making comics with McLeod. All right, let's see what else he's got in here. Yes, these different stages you can end up at. You know, so you might go through all these stages. You develop something cool that's, uh, you know, good enough for you. You like it. You got a fan base. And, you know, maybe that's where you want to stop. N nothing wrong with that. Uh, or you might start thinking, well, how can I take this to the next level and really get innovative? So you can't, you know, the, the trouble with this one is a lot of people say they want to do something. They don't want to do the same old thing, right? But uh, you don't really know what the same old thing is necessarily until you've really studied the genre and the medium. And you're sort of being intentional with this. Say, well, I'm going to make this video game that's uh, you know, quite a bit different than what you've seen before. Uh, but that's because I've studied what's out there, and I know what's come before, and I, I know I'm doing something creative intentionally, rather than just I'm not aware. <laughs> you know, I've, in, I've sort of blocked myself off from, uh, uh, you know, the competition. All right, so I think that will probably do it for this chapter. Uh, yeah, this, you know, I enjoyed enjoyed this this quite a bit but I wanted to bring this back to the Walking Dead here before we go Let's see if I can get back to my PowerPoint uh, we'll come back to that question in, the, in a minute and so I was thinking about the Walking Dead now I want to kind of map that comic book series onto these six steps uh, so for that and I've, after I've uh, read some interviews with the creators so I know this is more or less what they had in mind uh, and the main one was uh, the main idea of The Walking Dead it was a story about a man that survives the zombie apocalypse, but it's not the immediate story. Like everything that had come before was, you know, maybe like 28 days later, right? So maybe get like a month into this. Uh, but there's no, there wasn't like a really um, long term story, like years and years and years of, uh, you know, telling the story of the aftermath of, of a zombie apocalypse. You know, how would, uh, you know, and, and, and kids like growing up and, you know, coming of age uh, stories during the zombie apocalypse. So that was the really the big idea behind The Walking Dead was simply taking, it wasn't anything original about the zombie part. You know, a lot of stories about zombies, a lot of movies, <laughs> you know, they were inspired by. Uh, but that long sort of big picture view, that was the new thing. You know, that was the uh, exciting idea uh, behind it. But again, you know, anybody could come up with that idea, right? It's really what comes next that's important. And of course, the next step was, okay, well, what do we do with this idea? Um, it started off as a comic book. You probably knew that. <laughs> uh, but later on, they would make uh, novels. There's, of course, the television show. And, and all of those, uh, you know, when we talked about Henry Jenkins, we, we talked about these different medium or the uh, different media that are out there and the sort of possibilities that they offer. Uh, what makes them different, how you can really leverage those differences, and so on and so forth. But uh, really, to, to make a successful comic like The Walking Dead, they had to be really passionate about comics, know a lot about comics just as a, as a form or as a, as a medium, you know, as uh, Jenkins would say. Uh, and then the idiom, which again is just this idea of the genre. So, uh, you know, this is obviously not a superhero comic, you know, so it's, it's really different than that. Um, but there is a genre of, several genres, I guess you could put this in. You know, there's other zombie comics, for example, or zombie stories, uh, you know, we talked about. You sort of got the uh, genre that was inspired by Romero, or kind of created by him. You know, we could do the same thing for uh, Romero 
and Night of the Living Dead and, and Dawn of the Dead too. Uh, but you know, taking these established genres like the zombie story that had been out there, I remember talking about that with Bishop, and it was a voodoo zombie. Uh, it was a the zombies created with a voodoo powder and controlled by a, a voodoo master. Uh, so Romero took that genre, uh, but then he was he played around with it, right? And he changed it up, uh, came up with some new conventions for it. You know, things like that. Well, the zombies now let's let's make it so that instead of being uh, controlled by a, a voodoo priest. Uh, we'll just say that there is some kind of uh, radiation or a disease, you know, <laughs> something along those lines. And we'll make them cannibals, you know, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's really number three is where Romero kind of went in and changed up the genre. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think about The Walking Dead. I guess you could say the big difference with The Walking Dead just in terms of like the horror genre uh, you certainly see a lot more emphasis on a drama, a lot more uh, character, long-term character arcs. So it's really about these uh, development of the, the the people, you know, these characters in the story. Uh, I would probably go so far as to say, really, The Walking Dead. I mean, the zombies are just kind of in the background, you know, most of the time. It's really more about what's what's going on with these people uh, and these characters and their and the relationships more than the you know, zombie backdrop. All right, and then moving on then, what, what is the big picture, you know, how they're going to put all this together? And there's a lot of different ways they could have gone with this. But this is kind of in a, in a novel term. This is like where you're getting into plotting and outlining. You know, what parts do you want to put in? What parts of the story are you going to tell? What are you going to gloss over? Um, and so you remember the first part of this comic. They didn't spend a lot of time talking in, in the comic. You I think you only get like a couple of pages before... Uh, Rick gets shot and goes into the coma, and he sort of wakes up, and a lot of this has just already been done, right? The, it's several uh, weeks into the uh, apocalypse, so they set all that up. That's part of the structure, the uh, way they structure the story. Um, but there's also this idea of the comic issues. So this was a big decision because in the world of comics, sometimes they just release a graphic novel. Uh, so instead of having these little comics periodically, you know, month to month, uh, they could just do these big graphic novels. Uh, they decided not to do that and instead do these uh, regular issues and then they would combine those into a uh, chapters and those would be their graphic novels and then they would combine those again into those big omnibuses <laughs> uh, that we got for this class. Uh, but you know when you're telling a story on that you know at that level you really have to have a good sense of these bigger arcs uh, that you're trying to tell. Yes you've got the story with uh, Rick and, and, and Carl uh, but all these other characters and their story arcs and how many issues are you going to dedicate to that? And you know, are there going to be uh, episodes of the show, for example, that just focus on you know one character? Uh, I notice they're doing that a lot now in the later seasons. And so you get these sort of little arcs within arcs or stories within stories. But you know that's all again part of the structure of it. Yeah, and then fine, getting your hands dirty. How do you get it all done? And so so many people again they they think they're right. I'm just an idea person who cares right it, it's do you or do you care enough about it to actually learn how to make comics <laughs> so you're going to learn how to draw are you going to learn how to do good dialogue uh, are you going to uh, learn how to edit things and, and proofread things uh, are you going to learn how to revise are you going to learn how to handle feedback <laughs> you know just all the little nitty-gritty stuff that you might not think about but really that's where the work uh, comes into this and there's a lot of trial and error you know it's, it's not going to be easy uh, and then finally, the last part is the polishing, uh, so making it shiny. Uh, so after you've done all the sort of heavy lifting, this is really where you're going in and putting on those those fine touches. Uh, and like the, let's have a nice cover. You know, if you ever watch um, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, <laughs> you know the first part of that. It's so funny because he's you got these two guys who want to make a band, uh, but all they can think about is the video. Right, they they want to make this, this sort of a flashy video. They want to have like Van Halen in there. <laughs> it's like very superficial. Now you can tell they've really thought zero, you know, about any of the previous stuff we talked about here. You know, they're kind of stuck on like the logo and the name of their band, uh, that sort of thing, uh, instead of all of that stuff that has to come before. Uh, so that's really the 
the, why they put uh, why uh, McLeod put Surface last. <laughs> it's like the final thing. And they bring it back to those video games once again. Like this is where you might start thinking about, oh, okay, maybe we could have some God rays, or <laughs> maybe we could think about whether we want this in, uh, oh, what is it, HDR, you know, high definition, high definition range, or whatever the heck it's called. You know, you save that stuff for the end, because that stuff is not going to matter. You know, if you if you got a crappy game, it's not any fun to play. Just putting better graphics in there, uh, putting better music in there, you know, all that sort of thing is just not going to cut it. You know, I know a lot of you are into uh, you know, the Legend of Zelda, and Ocarina of Time, and all that. <laughs> and you, you know, that's a great example there of a game uh, where they really just nailed every step. You know, so it's definitely polished. But uh, again, you could have that great music and the and the, and the great animation and all that, but if, you know, if it didn't have a good story, if it didn't have good uh, gameplay dynamics, good puzzles, and all that stuff, it would just not nearly, wouldn't, wouldn't be nearly as good. All right, so let's wrap up with this question then. So I want you to think about where you are with a creative or artistic project. It could be just a hobby, you know, or it could be something you're working on here in college and that you want to do as a career. Uh, but just think about that. And which of these steps do you feel like you're currently at or kind of stuck in or maybe need to go back to and revisit and develop some more? Uh, I just kind of get like to get you thinking about that in terms of uh, McLeod's steps and uh, trying to apply it to your own life and, and career or, again, maybe just a hobby, uh, but some sort of creative endeavor. All right, well, let's wrap it up there. hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I always love to hear from you. If you've got any questions, comments, any stories you'd like to share, I'd love to read those. And I will stop it here and hope you have a good day. See you next time.